Hey guys, welcome back. And now we're going to be talking about linear approximation, which is also called linearization. Now, this technique is one of the smaller topics in calculus, but there's just some little tricks here and there that we need to go over. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we have that this technique is used to approximate blank, right? So linear approximation is used to approximate y values, right? So for example, what we're going to be doing is we have a function here, this red function, f of x, and we want to approximate certain values on that function. We're going to be using a line tangent, right? So we're going to pick a point, A, and we're going to be using the line tangent, which is this blue line, right? This tangent line to approximate values on our red function, right? So that sounds really cool, but how do we do it, right? We need to have an equation to use linear approximation or linearization. And that equation is given to us right here in this box, in this box right here. L of x, which is a function in terms of x, is given by blank, right? f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. And this is not a totally new formula. This is actually something you guys have seen before, right? And if you guys remember, equations of lines could be the, the point slope formula or the point slope equation, which is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, right? So you guys have actually seen this before. But we're going to give a little twist, a little tweak, so we can change it into our actual linearization formula, right? So in this case, first things first, we're going to say that this x, this a value here, is equal to our x1. So x1 is equal to a. That is going to be our first little change that we're going to say, right? a is an x value, and we're saying that x1 in this case is going to be our 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 x1. So let's go ahead now and do one more thing, right? If our x1 here, if our x1 is equal to a, that means our y1, our y1 is equal to f of a. So that's going to be our second change. Our y1 is going to be equal to f of a, right? Because there's two, there's two x and y coordinates match to the same point. So a is going to be the x value and f of a is going to be the y value. So if I go ahead and change that, just that. I'm going to have y minus f of a is equal to m, which I'm not going to rewrite for a reason, minus a, right? But now the last little touch that I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about m. What is m? m is a slope, right? And when we talked about slopes now, we now in calculus, we don't talk about slopes as m. We talk about slopes as derivatives, right? And we're going to go ahead and change m for f prime, for f prime, at a, right? So it's going to be the derivative or the slope at a. So we're going to be using the slope of this line tangent right here. We're going to be using the slope of the line tangent to approximate our y values, right? And now all we got to do is we got to solve for y, right? Because we're trying to approximate y values, right? So we solve for y, which is right here, which all that means we just have to move this over to the right. And if we do that, if we do just that, we're going to have y is equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. And our last little twist that we're going to do is we're going to replace this new y with this approximation of l in terms of x, right? So now we're going to say that these two are equal. This y and this, this new y and this l of x are changing because we're using our L of X to approximate our Y values, right? So you guys can see that that leads us to this bottom equation here. So linear approximation is nothing but a line tangent, which you already know, with little twist of derivatives and calculus. So let's go ahead and do an example so we can put this little concept all together. So the idea is that I want you an example one to find a linear approximation of the function at A. So I give you your a to approximate my my function, right? So I have here I have here f of x equal to x squared minus x plus one, and I'm going to use linear approximation to find an equation to approximate functions at at a. So the first thing I got to do when I'm doing linear approximation is I got to solve for this guy right here, which is f prime, and that's going to require me to take a derivative of f of x, which is going to be two x minus one. Boom, done. After I do that. I need to find my other component, which is f prime at a, right? I already took my derivative, so now I can find f prime at a. 
which is going to be f prime at one. So it's going to be two times one minus one, which is going to be equal to one. So I have that component, right? Now we need to find the other component right here, which is f of a. Cool. So f of a is going to be f of one, which is going to be one squared minus one plus one. And that is all going to give me just one because this one and this one are going to cancel and they're just leaving me with one. So now I have found both my components that I need. I've taken my derivative and then I found my f at my a point, right? And now I am ready to put everything together and find my linearization, right? Which means I'm just going to write L of X. I'm going to have F of A, which is just write the equation F of A plus F prime at A of X minus A. Right? So my F of A, I just said it was one. I got it from right here. And then I need to do plus F prime at A, which is just one times X minus A. And A is just one because I get it from right here. Right, so my linearization is going to be a total of one plus one by x minus one, or these are just going to cancel. Or this is going to be essentially equal to x. So in this case, we got a real simple linearization, right? It was just equal to x, and we actually don't need to simplify all that all the way over there. We're actually just fine with leaving it right here, right? If you want to get a little fancy, you can go ahead and simplify, but leaving it in this upper step where I have the blue is just fine, right? And the idea is that you have a function, you have a linearization, which you have a function in terms of x, which here we're saying that any function that we plug in, we, we can find, we can approximate any y value by just plugging in the x value, right? And it's real easy, it's real easy to say, I'd rather use this equation, right? L of x equal to x then x squared minus x plus one to find y values, right? Because um, L of x equal to x is simpler than x squared minus x plus one. The, the problem with linear approximation is that you can only find values that are gonna be like the most accurate or the, the least error that are, around, that are around your A. So for example, my linear approximation wouldn't be bad to approximate 1.02, 1.03 maybe even like 1.5 maybe you know but the the farther away you're from a the less accurate your linear approximation is so for example if you want to approximate 3.2 right you might want to use your a right so let's say you want your x to be 3.2 right your a has to be around 3 so it has to be 3 the best a would have to be 3 you know that's the idea here. You need to use values that are close to your, to the point that you're trying to approximate. So this, this L of X equal to X can, will be work out for 1.01, 1.02, 0.99, numbers that are close to one, right? But not too far away because the farther you get away, the less accurate it's going to be. And then that's going to be, that's going to make your linearization less useful or less powerful, right? So let's go ahead and do another example which kind of puts linearization together. So here in this problem, I'm telling you to use linearization to approximate 1.02, right? So the idea is the square root of 1.02. So the idea here is that I don't give you an F, I don't give you an A, I just tell you approximate this, right? And this right here requires a little more thinking because we actually need to go over what function should I use? Well. I'm trying to approximate square root of 1.02. So man, I should use my function to be, my f of x should be square root of x, okay? Now, what a should I use? I'm approximating 1.02. So I should use a equal to one, which is my closest whole number. Then, what is the actual value that I'm approximating, right? What is going to be my x? my x is going to be 1.02, right? And let's go ahead and bring down our formula here just for just a second. It's gonna be L of x equal to f of a plus f prime of a, and then x minus a, right? So then we, have, we go ahead and we have our formula, which I'm gonna go ahead and highlight for a second. 
this is our formula that we're going to be working with, right? So we have our function, so we can find our f of a. So we're good to go on this right here. Our f of a, we're good to go. We can find f prime of a because we can just take our derivative of our function and then plug in a, which we have both. And then here we have x and a. So we're done. We have everything we need to linear to find the linear approximation of this, right? So first, I need to actually find my L of x. And after I use my L of x, I'm actually going to use the L of x to find the approximation of one of square root of one point zero two, right? Which is the difference from example one. In example one, I kind of just told you find the linear approximation of this function, right? So I just kind of like gave you, I made you guys look for a general uh, formula for your linear approximation. But here in example two, we're actually gonna use our linear approximation. So let's go ahead and do that, right? So first things first, I'm actually gonna start from left to right here. So I'm gonna find my f of a first. So I'm trying to find my f of a first, right? So f of a means that I'm trying to find the f of a. So I'm finding square root of one, which is just one. That was an easy number, we're good to go. All right, next. Let's go ahead and find f prime at a. Okay, so that means I need to find my f prime. Cool, let's go ahead and do that. Before I find my f prime of a, right? Before I find my f prime of a, I need to find my f prime of x. And in order to find my f prime of x, I can do it with a radical, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this x to the one half. I'm gonna work with this guy better than you using with the radical. And if I take the derivative of that, I'm gonna get one half x to the negative one half. And we're gonna take this derivative through a little bit of change in order to be able to to work with it, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Let's go ahead and get rid of that negative power. I do not like. Let's go make it a positive power, bring it into the bottom. And then let's go ahead and get rid of this uh, fraction exponent. And let's go ahead and change it to a to a radical, right? So we're gonna have one half to radical x. That's gonna be a very common derivative that we've done. And now we're ready to find the second one, which is f prime at a, which means that I'm going to plug in one into, I'm going to find plug in one into my derivative, right? So I'm going to have one over two times square root of one, or well, that's gonna be simply equal to one half. So I have two, I have two things that I'm looking for, and now I need to just put it all together so I can find my last part, right? So that means that first things first, my linearization, right? My L of x, in terms of x is going to be f of a, which we said it was one, we're getting it from here, plus f prime, which is one half, we're getting it from here, times x minus a, and a we said was one. So you see, this is gonna be a very simple linear equation solving for, solving for a complicated square root that we don't know, right? So if you wonder how people do things in their head, like, oh, square root of this number, they actually do this, right? So now that we found the general equation for, now we found our general L of X or our linearization, we can actually go ahead and use it to approximate 1.02, which is gonna be the X value that we're gonna input here, the X value that we're inputting here. So let's go ahead and do that. So L, L of 1.2 is gonna be one, it's gonna be one plus 1.2, and that's gonna be 1.02 minus one, right? And if you actually like solve all this together, right, we can even do this, you can actually do this in your head. You can do one plus one half times 1.2, 1.02 minus one is just simply 0 0.02, right? And then 1.02 divided by two is going to be one point I mean point zero one. And if you add those two you get one point zero one. Right? So if you do your linearization of one point zero two, you get one point zero one. Right? And now if you actually were to plug this into the calculator, if you are, we're actually we're able to plug this into the calculator, the actual value of square root of one point zero two is equal to 1.00995, right? So you guys see how our approximation is actually fairly close, very close to what we did. So we just linear, linearized our equation or we found an approximation to our value, right? So whenever you see people doing stuff in their head, this is exactly what you do. You take down this, this um, square root equation, which is a lot more complicated, and you use a simple linear approximation to find its value, all right? So 
that brings back to my point that I want to make before I finish this video that the closer your A is to the value that you're trying to approximate, the more accurate you are. You see, if I were to use 2 to approximate 1.02, my error or the difference between these two points would have been much bigger. All right. So using 1 to approximate 1.02 is a great example, just like using like 7 to approximate like 6.98 is another good example. Right. So that's about it for now. And now we're going to do some practice problems with linear approximation. So see you guys next time.